Namaste. Welcome to the next video of machine learning practice course. In this video, we'll discuss the remaining steps of end-to-end -end machine learning project. We'll begin by discussing the step that involves fine-tuning of machine learning model. Usually there are a number of hyperparameters in machine learning models which are set manually by the machine learning model developer. Tuning these hyperparameters usually lead to better accuracy of machine learning models. However, finding the best combination of hyperparameters in a brute force manner is a challenging task. The hyperparameter space is huge and finding the best combination is a search problem in this huge parameter space. Fortunately, we have a couple of ways in which we can perform this activity in scikit-learn package. The first one is the grid search. We have a class grid search CV that helps us in finding the best combination of hyperparameters. We can import the grid search CV from model selection package. We need to specify a list of hyperparameters along with the range of values to try. Once we specify these values, grid search CV would automatically evaluate all possible combinations of hyperparameters using cross validation. Let's take a concrete examples, uh, example of performing hyperparameter search in random forest regression problem. There are a number of hyperparameters in random forest regression such as number of estimators, maximum number of features. So we specify the parameter grid or the combinations of parameters to try in form of a parameter grid. In this case, we specify number of estimators to try to be a list of three numbers, three, 10 and 30. And maximum features that we want to try is two, four, six and eight. We also specify the value of bootstrap to be false and the number of estimator to be 3 and 10 and maximum features to be 2, 3 and 4. So we specify here two sets of hyperparameter uh, hyperparameter search problems. There are two combinations. The first combination contains number of estimators with three values and maximum features with four values. And the second combination has an additional bootstrap parameter which is set to false. Let's compute the total number of combinations that will be evaluated here. The first one has three values for number of estimators and four values for maximum number of parameters. That would lead to 12 combinations. And the second one has two values of number of estimators, three values of maximum features, thus resulting into six combinations. So the total number of combinations that will be evaluated by the parameter grid is the sum of these two combinations which is 12 plus 6 leading to 18 combinations. Let's create a grid search CV object with the parameter grid. In grid search CV, we specify the estimator which is forest underscore reg. This is the random forest regressor object, the parameter grid, number of cross validation fold, the, the scoring the scoring scheme and a flag that, uh, that specifies whether we want to also return the training scores. So we need to train this uh, we need to train this model for 18 parameter combination and each combination would be trained five times because the number of uh, cross validation is set to 5. So in all we will be performing 90 model training runs. So we can launch the hyperparameter search by calling fit function on the grid search CV. Once the, once the fit is complete, we get the best combination of hyperparameter with the best underscore parameter underscore member variable 
of the object. Here, the best, the best combination of parameter seems to be maximum features equal to 6 and number of estimators equal to 30. Let us find out errors at different parameter setting. We can find that out with cv underscore result underscore member variable. And you can see that these are the, the mean squared error and this is the combination of hyperparameters. So in the first row, you can see that the maximum number of features to be used is 2 and number of estimators to try is 3. In this setup, we get mean squared error of 0.5. And you can see that there are these 18 combinations that we have listed over here and for each of these combination, we have specified what is exactly the value of the hyperparameters that were tried and what is the mean squared error. And you can see that the best mean squared error or the least mean squared error is obtained for a combination of parameter where max feature equal to 6 and number of estimator equal to 30 and that value is 0.352. So this is the best parameter, this is the best parameter setting that was obtained with the grid search. We can obtain the best parameter, uh, we can obtain the best estimator with best underscore estimator underscore member variable of the grid search object. And you can see that in this best estimator maximum features is equal to set to 6 and number of estimator is set to 30 and this was the combination that was obtained with grid search CV. In this case, we have initialized the grid search CV with refit equal to true option. When we set refit uh, equal to true, the grid search CV retrains the best estimator on the full training set. This is likely to lead us to a better model as it is trained on a larger data set. The second uh, option that is provided by the sklearn package is randomized search. When we have a large parameter space, grid search CV can be inefficient. In that case, it is desirable to try randomized search CV uh, class. Randomized search CV class selects a random value for each hyperparameter at the start of each iteration and then it repeats the process for the given number of random combinations. It enables us to search hyperparameter space with appropriate budget control. So we can import the randomized search CV class from model selection. The analysis of model uh, provides useful insights about the feature. Let's obtain the feature importance as learned by the model. So with grid search, we know that the best estimator can be obtained with best, under, best underscore estimator underscore member variable. We can obtain the feature importance by calling the member variable of this best estimator. Here you can see the feature importance of each of the variable and we have uh, listed the feature importance in the descending order of the importance. So the wine quality is, is highly dependent on the alcohol so or the alcohol feature has is the most important feature in determining the wine quality and it has got score of 0.24 followed by sulfate volatile acidity followed by total sulfur dioxide density and so on based on this information we may drop a few features that are not so important in prediction of the target variable and based on uh, the reduced feature set we again retrain the model and follow the process we retrain the model we find the best combination of the hyperparameters using either grid search cv or randomized search cv depending on 
the uh, depending on the size of the parameter space and once we obtain the best parameter we can analyze that model and uh, find the insights about the about the features that are important it may also be useful to analyze the errors made by the model in prediction and understand its causes this helps us this helps us in getting useful insights and maybe we can go back to the domain experts and consult if we can add better features to uh, stem those errors so you can see that this machine learning model development is totally an iterative process we start with some feature set and then we train the model we 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 perform the hyperparameter search and then we analyze the analyze the model we understand the feature importance and also look at the errors in the model based on the errors we come up with we go back to the experts consult them find out how to uh, how to take care of the error in order to take care of the error we might need a new set of features or some kind of a feature transformation of the existing existing features we perform that and we again go back and retrain the model and this process continues until we get the model of the satisfactory quality and once we are uh, happy with the model performance once we are uh, happy with the model that we obtain we um, you know we evaluate its performance on the test set remember we always uh, we always report the performance of the model on the test set because ultimately the model has to work well it has to generalize well on the unseen data hence the performance of the model is reported on the test set while evaluating the performance of the model on the test set we need to make sure that the transformations that were applied on the training set are uniformly applied to the test set here we make use of the pipeline class for making sure that the transformations are applied uniformly across both the training and the test set so we use the fit transform method of the pipeline object on the on the test set and we obtain the the transform version of the test set we use this transform version and call the predict method on the best estimator obtained through the grid search or through the or through the randomized search and this predict method returns the predictions on the test set based on these predictions we compare these predictions with the actual predictions and calculate the mean squared error or any other appropriate metric based on the the model at hand in this case we get mean squared error of 0.35 it is a good idea to get 95% confidence interval of the evaluation metric it can be obtained by using stats uh, stats class from Sci uh, from scipy we get uh, we get the 95% confidence interval with stats.t.interval by specifying the confidence interval and the confidence interval 95% confidence interval for mean squared error in this case is between 0.29 and 0.41 once we have a reasonable model based on its performance on the test set we reach the pre launch phase before launch we need to present our solution that highlights learning assumptions and system limitations to the group of our collaborator as we discussed earlier machine learning model development is a collaborative activity between the model developer domain experts and product teams we need to document everything create clear visualizations and we should present our model in case the model does not work better than the experts it may still be a good idea to launch it this will help us in freeing up precious bandwidth of the human experts and the final step in the process is the launch step in launch we plug in the input sources and write test cases to make sure that the model works well end to end writing test cases is quite crucial because it gives us more confidence about uh, working of different pieces together and once the model is launched we need to monitor it closely 
we need to monitor for the system outages, find ways to, uh, to mitigate those outages or minimize those outag outages. While monitoring the model, if we found that the model performance has degraded, we need to have a strategy to tackle that situation. The situation can be tackled either by retraining the model and this retraining can be scheduled after, uh, after some kind of a fixed time. We can retrain the model, let's say, in every two weeks or whenever we see a drop in model performance by, uh, by some kind of a threshold metric, then uh, you know, we can launch the retraining of the model. So for that, we need to first fix what is the threshold on the metric. And once that threshold is breached or once that threshold is crossed, you know, model performance, uh, once that threshold is crossed, we need to trigger the retraining of the model. Another important thing to uh, evaluate the model performance is to sample predictions for human evaluation. We can, uh, we can present the uh, predictions by the model in production to the human experts and get their feedback on how model is performing. We also need to carry out regular assessment of the data quality which is critical for model performance. Remember the model performance depends on the feature values and if features are not getting captured correctly it will adversely affect the model performance and the readings that and, and, the, and the output that we get from the model if we consume in the downstream tasks there could be uh, there could be uh, effect that are un that are undesirable. Finally, model maintenance, we can either train the model regularly uh, in every fixed interval with fresh data or we can also trigger the model retraining based on some kind of a threshold in the, uh, in the degradation of model performance. And we should also figure out how to, uh, how to push the trained model to production without disrupting the, uh, without disrupting the live path of the, of the survey. So these were the eight steps involved in end-to-end -end machine learning project. So I hope you have a better clarity about steps that are involved in machine learning, machine learning project. I, I request you to uh, follow this advice meticulously in, uh, in the subsequent classes or in subsequent sessions of this particular course and also you should carry this advice into your working. So if you follow this advice rigorously, you know, you will be able to build machine learning models of high quality and you will be a successful machine learning developer. I hope you enjoyed this content and and, and in the next and from the next class, we'll start talking about, you know, mechanics of a scale learn library. We start with high level introduction to a scale learn library and we will deep dive into different machine learning algorithms and their implementations with a scale learn library. Namaste.